not even put the two together. Oh, can you here comes Keisha. Traffic control, excuse me. All right, I'd like to call to order the Monday, October 18th, the meeting of the Conestoga Valley School Board. Welcome, everyone. Notice that all are in attendance except for Ms. Rodriguez. If you could all join me with the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, board, with that, I need a motion. You have your agenda in front of you. I need a motion to approve our agenda tonight. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Board accommodations for tonight. Please bear with me as there's a lot of names. And if anybody's listening, forgive me if I say your name wrong. So, congratulations to the students listed below who earned acceptance into the National Honor Society. The NHS is an organization based upon pillars of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. These 32 students definitely epitomize those traits. Seniors, Kalisha Baez, Kate Chadwick, Marina Gurgis, Natalie Hoover, Kyle Hutchinson, Riley Keel, Cassandra Ma Malas, Ella Obiama, Jaden Rice, Jenna Reichner, Andrea Tu, Delaney Valera Keen, and Sydney Weaver, all seniors. The juniors that were inducted were Nolan Armstrong, Leah Book, Garrett Funk, Marissa Heisey, Holland Helsel, Taylor Horst, Andrew Holstrand, Anna Kaufman, Caroline Culp, Sophia Livingston, Madeline McGauley, Kylie Metzler, Connor Nafziger, Abigail Phillips, William Rowland, Hunter Saviglio, Tyler Slinglaw, Rachel C. Sai, and Sophia Weiss. Those were the juniors. Congratulations to all NHS students inductees there. Congratulations to CV senior Casey Coffold as she brought home the silver medal at the 2021 World Archery Championships. With her silver medal, Casey became the first female to medal for the United States at the World Championships since 1989. This summer, Casey competed at the Tokyo Olympic Summer, Summer Olympic Games, becoming the second Olympian in CV High School history. Kim Glass, class of 02, uh, she won a silver medal in indoor volleyball. Kudos to Dr. Annette Facera and Mrs. Ken Kra Jen, Ms. Jen Krause as they were recognized for their flexibility and leadership during the 2021 Conestoga Valley Virtual Academy enrollment orientation and program revision process. Dr. Facera serves as the CVVA's secondary coordinator while Ms. Krause is the elementary coordinator for CVVA. Their commitment to strengthening student learning and to fostering a positive climate and culture for both staff and learners is a testament to their dedication and integrity. Congratulations to the following Huskin Middle School students of the month for September. The seventh grade students of the month were Peyton Good, Reagan Bradley, uh, uh, oh my goodness, Alessandra, uh, Alessandra Garcia Maya, Lucas Fong Sai Sana, Fong Sai Sana, okay, Jennifer Calderia, and Adam McDowell. Eighth grade students were Cordell Bear, Alyssa Landis, Riley Ripchinski, Ariane Shaw, Mia Kupta, and Jonathan Robertson. Kudos to our student athletes on the CV Girls tennis team as the following five tennis players, all seniors, qualified for the Lancaster Lebanon League Flight Championships. Jenna Reichner, Kalisha Baez, Savannah Burkholder, Nikki Fiddler, and Ella Tarosi. Jenna placed seventh overall in triple A single, triple A number one singles flight and also was named section one all-star as voted on by league coaches. Problem with recording the national anthem? No problem. A big thank you to Miss Dina Henry, our athletic director, as she stepped up to <laughs> stepped up to the mic to belt out a fine rendition of the song prior to our recent girls volleyball game. I don't think that's the first time she did that. No, either. it's not. I think we may have to make a recording. Yeah. <laughs> a big thanks to Rob Kiskadon, Patrick 
of Pinonato and John Albright of the CV maintenance team for their work on setting up and tearing down the bonfire on Wednesday and with Dr. Smith very early Friday morning to prepare for the outdoor student pep rally in the stadium on Friday morning. As Dr. Smith said, we were able to squeegee, use a leaf blower, and wipe the bleachers down with towels. Those bleachers are the cleanest they've ever been. <laughs> Go Buckskins. Accommodations for the month of October. Dr. Z, superintendent comments. I don't think you're gonna have as many names. I, no, no, I don't. Um, thank you, Mr. President. On the superintendent's report, let me print it up real quick. Um, you'll notice three recent personnel changes highlighted in red with Laura Kohler's resignation as reading specialist. We're also recommending her resignation as ELA department chair for Leola. We were able to complete the interview process with Dr. Marsha Fabian this morning to recommend her transfer from sixth grade at Fritz to eighth grade science opening at the middle school to fill Olivia Grenther's position. Mm. Finally, we're also able to wrap up the process with Amy Horst and recommend her transfer from the high school office assistant position to the administrative assistants for attendance at the high school. Um, I'd also like to draw your attention when we get there to the curriculum and instruction report that Dr. Mann files every month. You'll notice that there's an aligned integration right now with the district goals and the comprehensive plan. So when you take a look at it, uh, Dr. Mann would appreciate any feedback that you have. But we think it's cleaner and it, it truly aligns with our, our three-year um, process. And uh, I now have the honor of presenting years of service certificates to two outstanding board members. <laughs> All right, from the uh, Pennsylvania School Board Association. Good evening, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Pennsylvania School Board Association to honor two school board directors for the years of dedication to Conestoga Valley. School board service has long been a crucial part of our nation's legacy and its commitment to public education. As the first school boards association in the United States, PSBA has a rich history with more than 125 years of service. The consummate school directors are described as ethical, principled individuals with a deep desire to serve. They believe in the value of our public schools and local control of public education for the benefit of all students. Today's school districts are expected to offer more services along with world-class instruction and limited resources. <clears throat> These exceptions provide a tremendous challenge for school directors who are unpaid volunteers who give of their time to contribute to the schools and communities they serve. Schools continued efforts to provide high quality continuous education to all students during the pandemic further highlights the key role school directors play in educating our children. For more than 35 years, PSBA has been recognizing the contributions of dedicated local school directors of long-term service. The honor roll is the association's way of thanking those individuals who exemplify leadership by giving unselfishly of their time and talents for the betterment of the public schools serving students across this great commonwealth. It gives me immense pleasure to recognize the following for being part of this legacy. First, I'd like to call Mr. Mike Talley for eight years of service. And then our president, Mr. Todd Scherzer, for 12 years of service. And now at this time, I have the honor of presenting or recognizing our Chief Finance and Operations Officer, Mrs. Phyllis Heverly Flesher. Do you know anything about this, Phyllis? No, you did not. <laughs> this is uh, from PASBO. Phyllis has been approved for renewal status as a Pennsylvania Certified School Business Administrator, PCSBA. And in order to be granted the professional certification status by PASBO, a school business official must meet high personal, ethical, and professional standards established for the certification program. These include formal education, experience, and continuing education. Once attained, the certification must be renewed every four years through a program of professional development. PASBO is a state professional association of school business officials whose responsibilities include the business and service functions of public and non-public schools. Its purposes are to promote the highest standards of ethics and practices in school business administration and to encourage professional development and improvement of individuals engaged in school business management. PASLO is associated with the Association of School Business Official International. So at this time, Phyllis, I'd like you to come up 
and signed by your president and executive director from PASBA. Thank you. Awesome. And Mr. President, that concludes it for tonight. There you go. Uh, any correspondence from the secretary tonight? None this evening. Okay. <laughs> any board comments tonight? Could I add a couple more commendations now that we're done patting ourselves on the back? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, this comes out of our consent agenda. There were two that really caught my eye, and I thought maybe special thanks should go to Red Roads Credit Union, who evidently stepped up with a generous and three-year contract renewal when we had a vacancy in the spot. Uh, and the other one goes to the Buckskin Activity Alliance. I was looking at their report and was really impressed with the diligence that they put into mm -hmm. uh, gathering bids for the, the uh, project that they've done. Um, any of them are welcome on this board. Mm -hmm. They do a good job. They've done a lot of good stuff for our school, so I agree with those. Any other comments from the board? All right, with that, this is our first time in our meeting for public comments. As we mentioned before, public comments, you need to, if you're going to make comments, I need your name, address, and you have three to five minutes to address the board. So any public comments tonight? All right. Comments from CVEA? Nothing tonight, thanks. Okay. Comments from any other employee groups? All right, board in front of you, again, you have the consent agenda. These are things that are routine in nature or things that we've discussed at previous meetings. Uh, with that board, I need a motion to approve our consent agenda tonight. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call, starting with Dana. Aye. 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 And aye. All right. Adele, I think you're up. Okay. We go by the nickname of Adelis sometimes. Adelis? <laughs> it's not as cool as Brangelina, but it's plus, you know. Hi, good evening. So every year uh, at this time we're wrapping up the audit and um, we have our year-end budgetary transfers that we need you to review and approve for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we always try to have the budget transfers and basically uh, in and out of the same cost area. Uh, this year, though, was a little more challenging because our total expenditures did exceed um, the actual budget amounts because of all the COVID-related expenses. Um, and just a, a little segue, not to take Phyllis's thunder next week when we talk about the um, the audit, or next month when we talk about the audit report, but Carl Hogan from BBD will be here to present on November 8th. And um, we, there's the MDNA, the Management Discussion Analysis of the Financial Statements has the breakdown of what triggered some of the ex expenses to go over budget and in what categories. So, any questions on the budget transfers? I have this one. Mm -hmm. I am not asking you to do more work. <laughs> Put that in the front end. Uh, but we can no longer tell what the transfers were from and to. We can't match them. <clears throat> and. Okay. Um, uh, it's not not that I question them. It's just that it is our responsibility to right. oversee if they've been done appropriately. Okay. Is there any way that we could get that that detail? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can give you a report that comes out of Skyward. It's going to be more voluminous, but it'll have the exact detail oh, this, for you. Yes. Numbers, you know, yeah. of account numbers, yeah. and I have no idea. I don't know if money was taken from textbooks to go mm -hmm. to repairs or subscriptions to yeah. go to what. Yeah. So just that I could see for myself and be mm -hmm. assured that uh, all the transfers were in the appropriate categories. Yeah, we did the best we could as far as the categories. Yeah. That and, was and the it's first been round. that way for a little while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was always hesitant because I thought, well, that might be asking you to do a whole lot more. And that's not my intent. No, no. Actually, I take that report and it put it into this <laughs> format here for you, so that it'll be saving me some work. Okay, thank you. It's probably different because of that software upgrade, I'm assuming? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We did that software upgrade about four years ago, three years ago? Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming eight, that eight, eight, eight years ago. <laughs> seven, yeah. 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 Time flies. Time flies. Time flies. Okay. All right. Thank if you don't you. have any questions on the um, year-end transfers, the next two items um, Adele and I will also uh, cover. 
Um, next one is the approval for the fund balance commitment. So the last time, if you remember some... Well, we, need, we, need we need approval, approval for that. that. Yes, we do need approval of the Sorry. budgetary transfers. <laughs> so Go ahead. Our no. motion? I need a motion. I'll, I move that we approve the fund balance transfers. Second. Actually, you need the year-end transfers. Year-end transfers. Year -end transfers. Still a second? Second. All right. Roll call starting with Keisha. Aye. 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 And aye. Fun balance. Sorry, my apologies. No, you're okay, good. slow that down a little bit. <laughs> so uh, the fund balance commitment, if um, you remember, sometimes you only do this once a year if we don't make any changes. In other years, there are two opportunities to do it. It's at June when we do the, um, the annual budget. And then at this time of year, and the reason we do it at this meeting is because if we make changes to the commitment, we want to give those numbers to the auditor so that he can be here on the 8th to go through um, all of the final numbers with you. Uh, so we didn't make a lot of changes this year. Really, the, the biggest um, was a switch for us. And essentially, it was moving money be between two line items, um, which was the COVID-related expenses and, uh, and the assessment appeals. And so w as we were looking at, uh, we needed to use some of the fund balance and is looking at what we were going to use because the board had taken the action that the five teachers that we added last year would come out of fund balance. Um, we f Instead of using the PEASERS allotment, we flip-flopped those. We took about $450,000 um, out of the COVID-related expenses for those teachers and then, um, you know, kind of replaced it uh, on the uh, on the tax assessment appeal side. Um, two reasons for for where we chose for it to to be offset by. Uh, one is, and I will cover this with you um, as we go into November. Uh, the tax assessment appeals um, you saw last year's uh, numbers, which were fairly high, they're high again this year. So I'll, I'll give you a report of that. Um, that's unfortunate, obviously. Um, and then the other pieces, uh, certainly as um, the properties in the zone on Route 30 that the township has been working with for the tax increment financing grow, that number is going to increase as well. So we know we're going to have some exposure in both of those. So that's why it made sense um, for that to be the other side of it. So if you have any questions, we'll answer them. And if not, we also need your approval on this um, to set us up for November. <coughs> Any questions? All right, we need a motion. <laughs> I blew the last one. I'm not going yet. <laughs> Go ahead. I move we approve the fund balance commitment. Second. Roll call starting with Mike. Uh, yes. Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Uh, the next item, budgetary planning for 2023, is actually the spot where, again, we try to close that uh, 2021 year. So this is the last step um, in uh, the budget process before we kind of start going into uh, the next year. And so I did what I traditionally do, which is, and again, I'm getting a little ahead of uh, uh, the auditors here, but I like for you to be able to see this and digest it um, so that you're prepared for what he's going to go through when he comes in November. He will give you some more detail and certainly more from an auditor standpoint. Um, I feel like my job tonight is more to give you kind of the financial picture of uh, what things look like for the end of the year. Um, you can see, if you remember, we had been projecting to be in a deficit of about a million four. Uh, we actually came in at just around two hundred thousand dollars to the positive, uh, so um, you know, certainly about a one point six million dollar swing between the two. Um, Dr. Z, if you would just flip to the revenue uh, tab on that spreadsheet, please. And, and again, I'm not going to steal Adele's language, take all Carl's thunder, um, but if we could scroll up to the top, I do just want to cover just a couple of um, numbers that are probably going to jump right out at you. Uh, so uh, real estate tax obviously came in a little bit higher than what we had expected. Most of that was a relationship to... Uh, if you recall, when we approved that budget, we brought the collection percentage down because we weren't sure kind of how that was going to go for us um, in the middle of COVID. Um, and we used a 97% number. 
it actually uh, came in about a little over 98%, um, which is still lower than our, our five-year history. We tend to be closer to 98.5, 98.7, um, but not as much um, at, at decreases as uh, maybe we expected. Um, certainly the big one is a number of line items down from that, the earned income tax. Um, I have said this one to you a number of times, that what we really thought was going to happen with that earned income tax, when you saw it, what happened with the unemployment numbers, uh, that we were going to see a significant decrease there. And what ended up happening is that the jobs that were lost, um, unfortunately, tended to be lower paying jobs. So when you look at, obviously, the earned income being a percent of what people's wages are, it, there wasn't as big of an effect there um, as there may have been thought to be back in the middle of the pandemic. It's coupled on top of that, um, we are also seeing that um, it, that number has been just quarter to quarter, which you don't see, but we can certainly show it to you, much more volatile than it's been, I, I think, in yeah. my history that I've at least seen it. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a significant decrease in quarter 2020. Uh, followed by another one in quarter three of 2020, so quarter two and quarter three. And then if you remember, one of the things that uh, the state did that then the local tax jurisdictions did as well was allowed for a delayed filing. Uh, so we thought maybe we would see some improvement over the summer, but the number was still negative. But then quarter four, we had a really positive number, so that was a little bit odd. Then turning around to quarter one of 2021, the number went down again. So it's really something that's much more of a, a you know, a nice, um, not exactly your exactly linear because it does have some flow to it but a, a much more even consistent chart um, has much more peaks and valleys to it um, than, than I recall seeing but at, in that number then you can see that you know we were off um, by a little over a million dollars there um, can't say that you know that we would have thought that uh, going into it uh, so the good news is um, that we're kind of back to where we were from a total level in quarter one of 2020. That's the good news. Sort of the bad news is we're still not back to where we should have been with some regular growth in the number. So still, and definitely if you look at any unemployment chart, it's gonna kind of show you that exact same, uh, same trend line. And then um, also uh, there, um, you see the realty transfer is up a little bit. Um, that's really a function of a couple of properties that turned over that you know, we just, at larger properties, we just didn't obviously know we're going to turn over. Uh, so that's a, a big chunk of that one. Um, and then if you look at the, uh, the federal revenue chart, um, that's where actually it's going to sound a little strange, but the county money, the county grant money, and because it was county CARES money, it came in through that federal line um, within the local sources, and that was about um, three hundred and fifty dollars or $400,000, so um, big number there. And then on the expense side, um, it's going to be no surprise because we've talked about it a number of times um, that the big expenses there that you're going to see where we overspent uh, are going to be in the uh, tuition line item, which was a function of the cyber charter tuition uh, for students who went outside, and then also um, in general supplies. And the general supplies really is a function of that's where the uh, subscription services um, and software services for the virtual academy go. And that one was about $900,000. Um, so we did have some improvements um, in a couple of areas as well. Um, you know, we had budgeted a much higher number uh, in transportation, thinking that maybe we were going to need some more buses. And then we actually had a number of parents drive their children, so kids didn't ride. And so that number came in a little bit low. Um, we had some savings on the uh, SOS contracts um, because we had some open positions. Um, but then we also conversely, and again, when you roll up to those salary numbers, you'll see the increased costs for uh, the additional teachers and then um, in uh, purchase services, some additional costs to the IU for special education uh, services as well. So those are really the highlights. Um, I, I just wanted to you know, give, give it to you, give you a chance to take a look at it. Certainly, if there's anything that concerns you, you have any questions about, um, you know, Carl will be here, as Adele said, at the first November meeting. Um, but he'll have everything tied up and a nice little package at that point. So, um, you know, reach out to us in the next mm -hmm. couple of weeks and we'll get you whatever answers um, you need. Thank you. Awesome.
Then the next item on the agenda, certainly we don't need an approval on that one. So this one we do need an approval on. Um, as we had talked about previously, um, and sort of the easiest way uh, that seemed to be to do this, even though the schedule looks long, is back when we, uh, when we um, renegotiated our SOS contract, um, the thing that comes with that contract is Schedule A, which literally lists every position that we have with mm -hmm. them. So it seemed to make sense was instead of trying to find the places where we were <laughs> moving, is just to give you a whole new Schedule A and we're going to say, okay, we're now not going to try to reconcile it to the one we have. We're just going to go to this new one and, and everybody's on it. Um, so the, uh, the increases that you saw at the top are, are the ones that we discussed. Um, if you remember, we had talked about if they retro it to October 1st, it would be about $150,000 for this current year. Um, the $185,000 is the cost that it would be for any annual year covering all the months of the year. Um, so we do need your approval on that should you want to move forward. Like motion? I do. I need a motion. I move we approve the SOSL rate increase. Second. Uh, roll call starting with Diane. Aye. 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 And aye. Thank you. I Thank think you that'll go that a long way to getting us. Yeah, I think that'll help. Where so. we need to be. Yeah. And then last item um, that I have that you had also um, directed me to get for you is a proposal um, to provide a, an appraisal for the Smoketown Elementary School uh, so that you can have some sort of idea of um, the value of the building. So I um, had a couple of um, recommendations on folks to reach out to. Um, Eric uh, came highly recommended. And um, I, I thought is, I mean, if you remember some of the other ones that I have brought to you for appeals that we have, the price is in line with those. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're so moved, um, if you would approve this, I would like to uh, get it approved tonight so I can get Eric rolling on that so he can um, come back to you. And he thought it would probably um, only take him, you know, maybe six weeks to do it, pending he doesn't, you know, get any other big jobs before we move, but we're moving pretty quickly, so... Should be okay. I move that we approve the Smoketown property appraisal proposal. Second. Second. <laughs> Roll call with I debt. Yeah. Aye. 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 And aye. All right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I think that's it for me. All right. All right, board. So in front of you, you have the finance and operation report and curriculum and structure reports, as Dr. Z had said. Uh, any comments or any questions on those two reports? Could you remind me again, what is it you wanted us to review? Um, it, it's a different format, so yeah. you'll look and, and see that there's the profile of the learner. Yeah. And then there's the, the other one, with the principal, which deals with the um, comprehensive plan. So I, I, will, I, I didn't notice anything of difference. So. Okay. Dawn, you want to... So one of the differences under our new administrative structure in, involving... Um, the department chair people, as they are contributing, they're the ones contributing specifically to the profile of the CD learner, oh, which is dealing with programming in and around that. The, uh, the principal, the principals are submitting on the other report, which focuses primarily on the, as Dr. Z said, the comp plan, which is aligned to the district goals. So they'll be talking about providing a more global um, uh, examples or, or things for you to take a look at that pertain to the district goals and um, programming that would be related to that. So it's more not alignment than it is any basic content check. That's why it didn't look any yeah, different. Right. Right. Okay. <laughs> and so you also know there are different authors involved now. So. Yeah, and then the action plan part of it, who's responsible for which goals. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Dr. Z, any federal funds tonight? Not this time. All right. I doubt anything that you'd like to... Yeah, I'd like to add some things to the PSBA report. I'll mm -hmm. make this as quick as I can. Uh, as you probably know, PSBA, as well as the legislature, has been very busy, and I keep getting something new, and I can't keep this up to date. But I'll start with reminding you about the uh, School Leadership Conference. It is free. The uh, keynote speakers will be each of those days at 8.45. I don't know if that will be available later or not. Last year it was. 
uh, all of the sessions you can access anytime at your convenience. And I will tell you that last year, the uh, website they set up for this was so easy, I blew through it. <laughs> so we, we know it was easy. Uh, under initiatives, I'd like to add that they've also added some new things for onboarding and orientation of new board members. Uh, they do have a new program that you may have uh, gotten uh, in your email, in your inbox today. Uh, that's basically, you know, something that we'll need to consider seriously as we possibly bring on new school board members. Um, the other uh, initiative that they're pushing very hard is their Next Step campaign. They're interested in um, encouraging local school districts to uh, connect um, with their county commissioners and their chambers of commerce and their other local governments that, uh, on, on issues such as charter funding and, pack, and property tax. These are issues that affect them too and how much of their tax dollars actually get to the school districts as opposed to getting detoured. Uh, and of course, you're all aware of the changes of the relationship with NSBA, and I won't go mm -hmm. into any of that. Uh, I did get a notice asking them to wish uh, good luck to all sitting board members who are up for election this year. And under legislative issues, um, I got very little yet, but but they're evidently working on it. Uh, the issue with PCERS, I don't know how much that affects the board's contribution so much as the teachers, but when something's not right, it tends to spread. And I'm really concerned about what's happening with PCERS. And the other issue that they're starting to get more input on are book bans. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. All right, uh, any comments, Board Friday? Any questions? Lisa, anything from the CTC? Yeah. Okay. All right, Fred, you're up. Any comments from yeah. some of the construction work? Yeah, the overall project is 50% uh, complete. Uh, the work that's going on now, really the, the, the concentration is, um, is getting the envelope closed, getting the, getting the roof on the building and getting all the, uh, all the walls and windows in. Uh, windows are on site, uh, all the materials needed to button up the envelope uh, are on site. They're just going through the sequence of, the logical sequence of installing them. Uh, mechanical, electrical, um, Ruffins are ongoing, uh, concentrating on area A, uh, which is a three-story and working, uh, actually working to the east and, and uh, the area C, uh, B, C, and D. Um, like 99% of the steel is, is erected. Uh, the last, uh, the left of that photo right there is really the gymnasium. There are three uh, uh, clear span trusses that have to be installed just yet on, on that structure and some detail work, but then that, that gets decking and, and all of the building will be under deck. Uh, again, in this photograph, the, the push is uh, to get the exterior uh, uh, installation, spray on insulation system on, the, uh, the um, veneer is then following that. Uh, masons are working, uh, they continue to work weekends uh, put in some shifts on the weekends. Actually, it's, it's Saturday, uh, but that that is a help to uh, to get ahead and get this get the building closed up. Site work is uh, really narrowed down. Stormwater is uh, complete. Uh, West parking lot is is uh, being graded out now. Curb work being done for that. Um, some detail work over this the the. Um, the two athletic fields, uh, the scoreboard came in the other week installing that, and there's some fencing details that they're working on. Uh, questions? Yeah, I think last month I asked you, I think you told me we were 190 days behind. Uh, How many days are we behind now? We're pretty close to that. We're, we're, we are working weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, did I say 190? I thought you said closer. 150. Yeah, I thought I was closer to 150. Close to 150. So I apologize. That's okay. That, that scared me for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, sorry. <laughs> right. um, um, so that was sorry. a misplaced. But, it, but, it is, but it's substantially behind. It is, you know, it's substantially behind, and they, uh, the contractors are... Sure. Uh, being creative to, to you know, certainly get the manpower there. The GC is a key figure, uh, uh, and he also controls the Mason. Uh, it's actually their staff. It's not a subcontractor, so it's a little bit of a help in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are working the weekends uh, again, and they're the key 
right now a key player in in uh, in getting the building closed up for the winter. Once once the building's closed and a little bit before, uh, there is time to be made up. Uh, we discussed it at the last brief scheduling meeting we we had. Uh, they can start the finishes, and there okay. there are a lot of finishes that have to have to happen. For instance, paint you know the primers, the paints, the you know the the those types of things before you get into the actual casework and that type of thing. Yeah, so the main, and I agree. The main goal is closing that up before snow hits and all that stuff. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, there looks the difference between when we did the tour and now is. As yeah, the progress continues. I mean, it, yeah. it clearly is happening, and they're and they're you know the the effort is going on that way. It's it's uh, a little bit more creativity has to happen to get to to make up that that much of a gap. You're not going to make up the gap. No. 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 And you want to no, do it no, smart, no. and you don't want to oh, yeah, rush it, and you don't want to redo stuff. No. 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 Agreed. It's not. It's right. that you won't make up that gap, no, but you'll get you you will gain some time. What What are we planning on moving in? That's still just not delay the opening. It's still opening for the new school year. So this is, that's that's the plan at least. Yeah. Okay. Even with the delay, you still got to move that delay back. Yeah, that's right. Because the more time we have over the summer to get yeah. the building it's okay. occupied. Yeah. yeah remember, I, the substantial completion date, the original date on there is December. So mm -hmm. uh, we had originally thought maybe we would be done and we would move into the building mid-year. Um, you know, since deciding that we're not going to do that, you know, and, and again, I just want to say Fred and the gentleman that Fred has on site in conjunction with Murata, Maine, do continue. And Ken and I are in those meetings every two weeks to push them on trying to get this schedule, not at the detriment of doing mm -hmm. something quality wise, right. but trying to stack things up that can happen simultaneously instead of one after the other trying to make sure that they're on top of it. So there, there is a push to, um, you know, to try to improve the schedule, you know, because we still want to have time to be able to bring all the systems up and get mm -hmm. the furniture in and all those sorts of things. Um, so hopefully we'll have some improvement um, and then with not starting until, or not moving, starting to use the building until the beginning of the school year. No, my you know, main concern was, was at least getting it closed yep. up. I know we're going to be behind, that's fine, the intern, but at least getting it closed up so we can get in there. Yep. And then everything else will work itself out from there. Yeah, part of those part of those uh, big parts, and I don't know if you got to see it in your walkthrough. I unfortunately was not able to make that, but uh, I think at that point, uh, the, all the big mechanical equipment, for instance, was mm -hmm. is yeah. up in the mezzanines uh, and that type of thing. I mean, that stuff you don't get. You know, if you don't look up, you don't get to see that stuff when you when right. you, do, you see gray walls. Right. Uh, you know, but uh, that kind of those kind of big. Uh, uh, Parts are are in the building, uh, you know, being piped up, being completed to uh, uh, to get the systems going. Uh, that type of roughing is going very smoothly. Both con contractors uh, are, I think, are doing a, a wonderful job, um, you know, pulling all those parts together out through in a logical sequence and not not over not stepping on other people along the way. Right. So good feedback on the turf fields. Yeah, that was yeah. put in. Really good feedback. I think we approved two turf and two grass. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes, we did. When will the grass ones go in? Or they're seeded. seeded. So they're they seeded. Seeded. Mm -hmm. seeded. Okay. We just need some time for the just grass grain. to grow. Yeah. yeah, it'll take some grooming after that, and then yeah. leveling and out, and smoothing a, it out, and a good spring. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the okay. that's the key. But but yeah, there's their level, their crown. The level, yep. they're level. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, they're just where they're supposed to be. So. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks, Fred. All right. This is the second time in our meeting for public comments. Um, any comments from the public? You want me to sit down, right? It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Name, awesome. address, and... Yeah. Yep. Uh, Mark Gensel, 36 West Main Street, Leola. Uh, father of four. Three of them are in the school district. Well, yeah, the fourth one is two. I always say that wrong, but she's four, so she doesn't count yet. Um, so, let me get my notes back up here. I have just a couple things. Um, again, disappointed in the whoopie pies for the general public, but that's okay. Continue to work on that for me. Um, and, of course, I was, because I'm that guy, I just want to pray real quick. Um, so let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the members of the school board and for the superintendent. 
I pray that you keep your hand of protection over them and their families. I also pray for our nation and continue to pray for our community and the division that's here. Uh, we need you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Um, so just a couple things. Um, and I always like to start with a reminder just about um, for the community that I know of just why we like, remain a little bit um, concerned and upset. And just kind of like a small example of something that kind of took place here. Um, just an example of like sometimes things happen and, and we can approve things and forget that there's rules in place and responsibilities in place for a reason. A very loose connection would be kind of with the school funds. Like I pointed out, um, the board has a responsibility to see where those funds get transferred to. But over time, things become a little bit more lax and we disapprove and we let it go and we trust that everybody's doing their job and that it happened for a reason. So for parents that like parent choice, we see that happening at the state level with something like a mask mandate, and maybe the future of vaccine mandates and stuff where we have a Pennsylvania General Assembly for a reason and those things so that things get voted on and get done the right way. And when they're not done the right way, we look back and we go, when did we give up that right? When did we give over that authority that should not have happened? And so for a lot of us, that's why we feel the way we do. So like I said, a loose connection, but again, it's just a reminder about um, the parents in the community that I know that feel the same way I do. That's why I want parent choice when it comes to mask mandates and, of course, the vaccine mandates as well. But I understand that's something we have to fight at the legislative level. Um, one of the other things um, that I've expressed a little bit of concern about recently is the, um, the national sex, sex education guidelines for 2020. And I was curious if CB adopted the 2020 guidelines or if they're sticking with the 2011. I was wondering if anybody knows the answer to that question. And also with something like that, is that something the school board votes on or is that just implemented or, or how does a changeover like that occur? Does anybody know? That's a great question. I'm, I'm just sure curious. We've got it on a particular we've program. program. We've got it on the larger curriculum. Okay. So it's connected to the larger curriculum? Yes. So that, okay. would, that, that would be, oh, I'm sorry. I, what I had said was school board does not vote on specific programs. We vote on the larger curricular program. Gotcha. Uh, those decisions, we say what we want, they decide how to do it, okay. and therefore that would need to be taken up with the appropriate administrators and department heads okay, gotcha. and superintendent. So I'd be curious about that one, and the reason is that the 2020 National Sex Guidelines has a, a, a much more progressive view that a lot of the community don't agree with. Um, as far as what's being taught to the children, particularly with all this stuff with gender identity and stuff like that, obviously that's a divisive um, that is a divisive, progressive idea that not everybody's on board with yet. So to already have that being implemented as far as sex guidelines go in schools has a lot of us very concerned. So that would be the one thing that I would like to get some feedback on if possible. Isn't, my, my answer question. Isn't that voluntary, participating in those curriculum? Uh, you can opt out. Yeah. Well, it is voluntary. Yeah, it's not a gotcha. It's not a so there's always a form or something. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I only also don't even remember what grade that is actually. I was thinking. Is that it's like fifth? Fifth. 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 Yeah. Is it fifth right now? Is that the standard? Fifth. 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 Okay. Fifth. And is that handled by, when it comes to sexual education, is that like an outside group that comes in or is it taught no, by? No, it's by the teachers. Oh, it's by the teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. But they divide right. them up into boys and girls. Yeah. So okay. the teachers do. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, and so that leads to another question. I know we mentioned you mentioned some of the book bans really briefly. Um, obviously, as a community, we're starting to see a lot of these questionable books, questionable books that, again, are, are furthering certain ideas that we're not totally comfortable with. The, some of the talk that's happening now is there's such one such book. It's called, like, Fred Gets Dressed, and it's about a little boy who wears his mom's clothes, and it's by a specific author that supposedly might be coming to Smoketown to talk about that book. I don't know if that's true, but again, this is something that we're hearing about. Um, so if not, that's fine. Again, this is, I, I'm just mentioning what the public is talking about. Um, I haven't seen anything show up, but obviously with stuff like that, these are the things that parents are concerned about. Is yeah, also I'd appreciate books. if you would reach out to your administrators. Sure. Because the, the worst thing we can do is perpetuate rumors. Sure. So if we can go to the source, go to your principals who you have okay. close connections with. Gotcha. And, and they'll tell you. And if you can't get an answer, please come up the chain, uh, Dr. Mann, Dr. Kozer, gotcha. secondary elementary. We can we can nip this in the bud and sure. kind of ease the the angst that's going out there in the community right now. Yeah. No, that's great, and I appreciate you so saying that because I, I literally read that about two hours ago. Because so people have reached out to me, even with the mask mandates, and we've exchanged information. Yeah. So we want to continue to do that work. Sure. So, All right. and, and the board is well aware of of concerns that we have because part of my job 
is to keep them informed of what we're doing as administrators. Sure. Okay. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Um, and one of the other things I mentioned, or, or I de you had mentioned the, and I'm just trying to understand because of the effect it would have on you guys, but also our teachers and stuff like that. You mentioned the piecers. Is that affected by the school board decision? Mm -hmm. No. Is that That's something? That's a state program. That's a state program. Okay. Is that something the community needs to be concerned about for those of us that are I mean, connected to I mean, teachers? You can concern yourself with it, but yeah. there's nothing. I mean, it's it's we're told what we have to contribute into the retirement system. Okay, gotcha. And that's and, the, and the problems they're having right now, as far as I understand it, it's really a complex financial organization. Mm -hmm. uh, affects the, I think, the teacher's contribution. Am I right? Yes. Mm -hmm. For okay. years, the for years, teachers <laughs> has been underfunded. Okay. And if you, if yeah, it's, uh, over the course of the last, oh my goodness, since I've been on the board, our contribution to Peasers has gone from this to this mm -hmm. okay. and it's been they've been kicking the can down the road for so long that now that our schools have had to pony up and contribute okay. so but it's not it's a rate that we're told what to contribute okay. um, we don't get to negotiate yeah okay. or argue so is that the whole problem, thing like in contention has, right now the problem has to do with the kinds of investments the peace report has been making we have okay. absolutely nothing to do with that okay Okay, gotcha. So, yeah. Sorry, we can't give you Teachers anything with that. No, that's okay. Again, any anything that's going to affect our public educators, our teachers and stuff is always something I want to ask about because if it's going to be a concern to them, then maybe it should be obviously shared with the community. And since you brought it up, I just wanted to ask. Your legislator, what they know about it. Okay, yeah, we'll do so it. not only the teachers, but the district. Yeah. Because the district's contribution is over 35%. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to bring up was, um, I think I had mentioned this last week too, but just the idea of how do we find out about um, the people that we're voting for in November? Is there an easy way um, to... It's on the, you can call, it's on the website. Okay. Pennsylvania, uh, Lancaster County or you Board of Elections. Lancaster County Board of Elections site. And they'll show and you the... And click the on candidate list. information. Okay. And it lists in order the candidates. Okay. By party. Gotcha. In the order, who is running and what position they're running for. Okay, gotcha. Does it give other information in addition? No. 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 Okay. No. Just so, in That's why I okay. said call me. Gotcha. <laughs> I can do that. Yep, I can do that. You don't submit a bio or, or anything. Okay, you don't have, that's not required. Uh -huh. Okay. Gotcha. Well, All right, just checking. the candidates. I don't know if they do that anymore. Or, or what they believe in. So no. Not so much no. anymore. Since they, uh, they dropped the legal and voted voter's guide, it's become very uh, sketchy. Right? Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. And to segue off what Dr. C said earlier about the, the book, Fred Gets Dressed, whatever it's called, about reaching out to your principal, yeah. you said Smoketown, right? That, I think that's well, what I heard. After this meeting, your principal is right behind you. Sure. You know, well, she's not even mine, problem. but I did meet her. <laughs> and I figured, yeah, absolutely. So. No, and that's good. Again, because I, I know there's a lot of families that are listening, so it's that just that kind of a clarification, and that's all part of the communication mm -hmm. process. When something comes up, how do we... Nip it in the Talk bud. To your principal. Yeah, yeah, I think, exactly. I think your Talk first order of opportunity is always to go to your building principal yep, first. For sure. Um, and my experience with all of them has been great. Mine and even the other ones. Because they're, they're, it, then you don't have to wait until you know the second Tuesday or the yep. third or the uh, second or third Monday to come here. Yeah. You can always go for your answer right away. Gotcha. Okay. We can definitely do that. Um, and so the last question involved with those, like you had since you had mentioned the book bans. And I know with the connections to all the other districts. So with, if any of those certain books or something are coming up as sources of contention within specific districts, do the other district heads share that with you? Do you is that something you guys talk about, just out of curiosity? Not really. Okay. No, every district's different. Sure. And we have processes for review. Okay. So they're, they're in place. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. I think that's all I have this time. All right. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Sir. Thanks, Mark. Aaron, excuse me, Aaron Fisher, 145 Spring Meadow Lane, after the PA, 17522. Thanks for letting me address you tonight, board. Appreciate that. Um, just a quick uh, testimonial. I know the last time we had spoken, my wife had mentioned my son, Ethan, in Brownstown, fifth grade. And uh, we did fill out the 504, and uh, we've been able to educate a lot of families on just, because it's a very 
intimidating form of the 175 questions and kind of just how it relates to the mask. And I know that a lot of school districts are different, and I do find that Brownstown um, CV is different when it comes to how they're handling that in some ways. And so as a testimony, um, through the 504, the mask has made a, uh, coming off my child has made a huge difference. In fact, so much the teachers actually emailed us several times seeing the, the mannerism difference. He has not gotten a single math question wrong in any quiz or test where he was kind of just a, just a below C student, very intelligent kid, but just struggling through school. And so I just want to just make that as a testimony that there's a huge difference even in home with my son and behavior. Uh, I, I can't explain it, you know. Um, um, he's a well-loved kid and pray, well prayed over, and I just the mannerisms uh, was just beyond my my mental comprehension, and so that was a lot of what you know my my coming to uh, the meetings was to at least address that. I know my wife has addressed that as well, and so um, I, I would just encourage you just to keep working hard and be mindful that we are seeking parent choice. And, um, you know, where do, where do we currently stand um, as far as, you know, we talked about there's different things being proposed at the state. Um, what, what's on, are you able to speak as to where, as a board, we stand on that? We, I believe we have a president that uh, has said that, um, you, know, when, uh, you know, when will the mask mandate be gone? It's kind of a, a timeless answer. It's kind of when, the, when, when children can be vaccinated. Um, is, that, is, that, is that an accurate statement? Um, as to a timeline, we can't speak for the Department of Health. Okay, and so where, where, where is our where is our tension point kind of uh, lie? How long do we continue? Because I believe there's going to be more parents that are starting to kind of get annoyed with the, just the length of having to wear a mask, where they might start to well, see. I'm just waiting for your complaint to work its way through the governor's office. Okay, that issued the mandate. And so, where, what, what's our current? Do you, do you have a current timeline? Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if you were privy to more information no, no, than maybe no. we were. <laughs> yeah, we know what you know. Okay, well that's that's well, that's, put it out there. that's an honest answer. Yeah. So, um, as far as the, the 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 meeting for November the fifteenth, I had looked at the website, kind of looking for like a location. It was kind of still to be determined. And then on the agenda tonight, I do see that it is listed as uh, a six o'clock tour of Brownsville Elementary School. So. Thank you for the for the walk instead of the drive. Um, but uh, <laughs> um, welcome to our neck of the woods. Um, but can you kind of just walk me through uh, what is kind of the plan and the idea of what uh, what we're hoping to discuss or what what you're allowed, what we're able to talk to um, in, in that format? I did have a. I'll throw the second question out there. Would it be possible if if, if I would be able to or, or we could arrange that like an off off, uh, a non-government site, a uh, non-school site, maybe like a, if I could arrange for an LCCS auditorium or gymnasium and pull that off in a very nice setting where there, if there's parents, you know, obviously there's going to be a lot of folks who are going to want to come to a forum, um, but, you know, might be uh, limited and, you know, for an off-government well, uh, golf government site, maybe we can make mask optional there at that point. Would you be open to the, something like that if it was done in a timely manner and, and could be done? And I'd be happy to discuss that through you guys through email. I just was curious if that would be wasted effort or is that something that could be considered? We don't have an agenda yet for that. We do not. Yeah. I mean, there's we're in the executive session. We're going to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm I'm not going to say yes or no. It's but you put your open to it. Certainly, we okay. something that as a board we could uh, okay. bring up. All right. I just wanted to maybe that's that I'm I'm fine with that answer. Um, not to say I have it uh, locked down, but if it was possible, I was just curious. Sure, um, that would give you guys the freedom to decide to do, you know, to have a little bit of, of, of more freedom as we talk. But in a community forum, is that going to be just a thirty-minute forum, and then you guys kind of go at seven o'clock to what gets done, you know, historically on on the yellow sheets of paper? Correct. Um, so how how would that uh, how would that format? look like the format in typically in a community forum is the topic uh that we that we talk about um <coughs> it's shared however the presentation is put together and then there is an opportunity for the community to ask questions about that topic that we that, that has been addressed in past times it's been about the budget um construction construction there's been different topics that are kind of things that we don't maybe spend a lot of time on at a board meeting, and so the community forum is an opportunity to to allow the community to hear some of those things that we just don't spend a lot of time at, at a at a board meeting. Okay, 
So would the so it would be generate the questions wouldn't be it wouldn't be like an open mic mic where someone comes up says something and then no, you, no. you respond. It's not a town hall. It's not a town hall. No. Okay. Um, Mark, do you have any questions to that one? When will you have that agenda? You said you're talking about that the executive meeting tonight. Yeah. Or just you guys? You obviously, you're talking about that. You have a topic. In yeah, we'll we'll you post the agenda when we send out the invitation cards. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, and uh, I just had a, uh, one last question. So, just how many students um, did ultimately go to the to the charter school? Ultimately, that were lost from the Conestoga Valley School District to, to kind of charter. I'm sorry. Can you address that afterwards? Can you address that afterwards, as opposed to here at the meeting? Yeah, I can let you. Know. I can get you the information. Okay. Well, of the last, my last question. Okay, so yeah, that, that that question of just out of just my own mental uh, math, and then yeah, we we presented that last, last week. Last week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's on the um, if you go to the agendas, it's there. There is a PowerPoint that lists how many students we had last year and this okay. year. In fact, it's a running total for a number of years. Okay, I apologize. I didn't do my research before. All right, thank you. Yep. I make a comment. Yep. Um, I think what we just did this evening was productive, mm -hmm. and I'm sort of uh, wrestling with how do we maintain the original purpose of public, public comments, comments and not stop the ability of people to get timely information. Right. So I don't know. I'm not quite sure how we do that, but I think it's something as a board. We I need think these are unprecedented times. We I need think there's flexibility. We need to consider. Just a, yeah, but at some point, sometimes there we is. might want to say, no, that this is beyond what we intended a board meeting, but we don't want to not have that opportunity for the public. So I'm not quite sure how we handle that. Because if we're not consistent, then somebody's Certainly. going to get I, I agree with you 100%, but these are interesting times. That, 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 that's mm -hmm. where the problem comes, when it's more people yep. and we don't have the time to, to do it all, and I don't like shutting people out. Certainly. Okay. All right. Any other public comments? All right. Any board initiatives or concerns tonight? You should start mine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Board, you see in front of you, uh, everyone you see in front of you, our meetings for next month. Um, board, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn to executive session. Oops, for, hold on. Diane? What? What? There was an item. Can you see? Um, I'm going to take a motion to adjourn to initiative. Oh, we're good. We're going to take care of that. Okay. Thank you. Oh. All right. No, sorry. All right. Where was I at? You were going to make you were going to, you a, need motion a motion to, to adjourn to executive so session. Moved. Second. All, second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We are